My bakery sales are down. <laughs> Nobody buys junk.
test, test, test. We're going to get started if everybody could have a seat and help yourself to some hors d'oeuvres. They have some grants that really did. Yeah, yeah. And they can go to a small business store and then small business. Store. Walter, Walter, report to microphone. <laughs> Volume's okay? <laughs> Test it. Test the volume. Tell me it's Testing one, two. Okay, we're going to get started. Please have a seat. Thanks to Matt, we're streaming this live. Got a Google UH Hilo YouTube, right Matt? If you want to see it, they archive it and they stream it live. Welcome to the High Plan Launch Party, Hawaii Island Business Plan Competition. This is my co-chairman, uh, co co Dr. Jim Wyben. I'm Kelly Moran, and this is our second year. And there's a lot of people who've helped us get this far, and we'll be introducing some of our sponsors today. But I just wanted to say a couple of words about how this business plan competition came to be. Jim and I were sitting on the College of Business Advisory Board three years ago. And we noticed there was no entrepreneurial curriculum. And so it was Jim, I, Jim's idea to say, hey, why don't we do something to encourage an entrepreneurial ecosystem and maybe include it in the curriculum at the College of Business. So we batted it around, and Jim came up with the idea of having a business plan competition. And it took us about a year to pull it together, thanks to a lot of help from people here. And then we launched last year our first one, and now we're into year two. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I want to say a few words about the uh, nuts and bolts of the competition for those people here who are actually inter interested in participating. Uh, first thing is check out the website that has all of this information on it. That's highplan.biz, quite simple. Uh, schedule of events, we had one small change recently uh, where we had to change one of our events in Kona because it was colliding or overlapping with the Ironman event in Kona, so you can't, you know, everything gets shut down that day. So anyways, September 10 is the due date for the uh, plan submission, and midnight is the absolute cutoff on September 10. If you're two minutes late, we won't accept it. Um, November 21 will be the, that's the new revised round two, October. Uh, sorry, October 21 uh, is the round two event and that will uh, convene at the Natural Energy Lab in their incubation center. And then November 4 will be the uh, finals or round three and that also will convene at uh, Natural Energy Lab in Kona. But of course, everyone from Hilo is invited and encouraged to participate, and we think that uh, there's a lot of great stuff happening entrepreneur-wise here in Hilo. So I encourage you all. Tonight, we're gonna have some uh, conversation uh, led by Derek Carisu with some of our Helos uh, star entrepreneurs, so you can hear a little bit about uh, how they got into it and what their thoughts are. Okay, so just briefly, what is this entrepreneurial ecosystem that we're trying to birth? 
And it's really a, a combination of mentors, entrepreneurs, small business owners, educators, business leaders, students from high school, college, HEC, community members. It's a collage of people that we want to cross-pollinate ideas with and exchange systems. So one of the reasons we have these name tags is we want you guys to network and talk story. There's a lot of talent in this room that can help you with some of your ideas. So that's the ecosystem we're trying to foster. And when we were first talking about this, Jim is a zoologist and Dr. Straney is a biologist, right? Zo oh, they're both zoologists. And when we were first talking about this, they were talking about ecosystems. And it was so funny to hear Jim and Dr. Straney talking about building an entrepreneurial ecosystem. It was really neat to see. And anyway, that's one of our goals is to end up with that. So uh, we'd like to introduce briefly a couple of our lead sponsors, uh, starting with uh, University of Hawaii Hilo, which was Don Straney was on board right from the beginning, and he couldn't be here, but I'd like Ken Hahn to come up and just say a few words on behalf of the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Ken? Aloha, and I'd like to welcome everybody on behalf of Chancellor Straney. And we're really proud to be part of this organization, and you know, I think how it's starting to blossom it's going to have a big effect on the island. And it's important, I think, I think we all know that our island is a little different than most places. And to have this kind of competition, which encourages people to rethink and recreate themselves and create businesses with an entirely new format, you know, is going to be really important to our island going forward. So I'm also honored to be, for the very first time on my part, to be at a presentation with Derek. <laughs> Derek brought entrepreneurism to my family by uh, bringing a lettuce garden to my daughter's kindergarten class. <laughs> they grew lettuce, outcomes were a book that was published for each of the kids, and then some great tuna fish sandwiches at KTA. <laughs> so she learned early, you know, in this kind of model. Um, Chancellor Straney is also proud this year to go ahead and he is going to award a full year's tuition scholarship to the highest ranking team from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. So whoever, yeah. so the students that rank the highest will be able to get a tuition waiver for one whole year. And I believe that HCC is, has something similar that they're planning on offering as well. So with that, I think I'll just let things move on and uh, turn it back over to Kelly. Thanks. Thank you, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Ken mentioned the prize uh, Dr. Straney has put up, which is a tuition waiver for a UH, highest ranking uh, UH student in the competition. Uh, Rachel has offered the same thing from HCC. Uh, Another prize that's gotten offered up this year, uh, our media sponsor is Pacific Media Group, and they are offering a $5,000 advertising in-kind prize to the best uh, business plan that would benefit from that kind of uh, thing, somebody who is actually doing business in Hilo and uh, distributing something that would benefit from their radio and or BigIslandNow.com uh, advertising. So those are great prizes, but the big one is the first prize and that's $25,000 and we're off, we are offering that again this year as our grand prize. So we heard from Ken Han on uh, UH Hilo and the other lead sponsor is the Hawaii Island Chamber of Commerce and also the Kona Kahala Chamber of Commerce. And today we have the president of the Hawaii Island Chamber of Commerce, Bill Walters. Whoops. Let me start by uh, congratulating Jim and Kelly. Uh, you know, getting a program like this off the ground, running successfully, 
even one year in the first year is uh, no small task. It was a big task, and we congratulate you for doing that and coming into a second year with a head of steam, and we're very pleased to be able to be a part of that and, uh, here on the island. One of the things that's very important to us as business leaders as we've looked around is that we hear the reputation of being the 51st out of 50, uh, most difficult places in the country to do business, and uh, well-earned. Um, and we look at some of the industries here, our drivers, you know, agriculture, government, even tourism, and we don't see a lot of growth out there. And at the same time, we see a lot of underemployment and a lot of unemployment. We have taken this on, uh, and we're asking others and other business organizations to join us to specifically attack those issues because the best that we can do in that situation is to create strong businesses that hire people, that create good jobs, that create jobs for those who are just graduating, for those who are at all levels in our economy. That's what we can do best uh, for this economy. And so we look at this program that uh, Jim and Kelly have put together, and it's, it can be and will be a critical part of that. Because if you create a business out of nothing, a small business, and you are successful, you'll spread your wealth and eventually you'll hire more employees. You'll become an increasingly important part of this environment. And it's all of us working uh, together in that and bringing new industry in. And like I say, creating new industry is a great way to do that. So again, we congratulate you. And we recognize what you're doing is a, a very important, very significant for this island economy and something we very much need. So thank you, Jens. So also a shout out to Kona Kohala Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining this year and being part of this. A um, couple of people I want to recognize in the room tonight. Somebody who works behind the scene at UH tirelessly, never takes any credit, Jerry Chang. Thank you for all you do. Where are you, Jerry? You're awesome. And also from the College of Business and Economics, the acting dean, Tam Vu. Where are you, Tam? Awesome. Thank you, Tam, for leading the College of Business. And one of my favorite faculty members at the College of Business, along with Tom DeWitt, Emily DePillis. Thank you, guys. So one of the things Jim and I are doing is we're alternating between Hilo and Kona. Every year we're going to switch because there's a big divide on this island. I live in Waimea, so I probably see it more than others, but we want the west side and the east side to both be an integral part of this ecosystem we're building. Because uh, Jim's uh, shrimp genetics company was at Nelha, so he has a huge following over there, and my sphere of influence is really Hilo, so we really want to include both sides of the island in this emerging ecosystem. I think it's going to be really valuable. Okay, and we're trying to save time for uh, Derek because he's our lead person. But one more short housekeeping. Um, we're having a small business planning workshop August 9th. Uh, and I'd like Tom Lettern, who's the uh, HDDC uh, chair along with Dennis Boyd, just to say a couple of words about this small business planning workshop that we're having at, I think it's at Nelha, Tom? Yeah. Anyway, that's going to be August 9th, if you're interested in how to write a business plan. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Um, I'm, I'm one of those that come from the other side to here, so I'm <laughs> part of that. Okay, we're good enough. Uh, I work with the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, um, it's a state agency uh, whose mission is to uh, support economic growth in the state through, primarily through creation of jobs. Uh, high-paying, sustainable jobs, jobs with focus primarily in the tech sector, but it's an emerging sector on this island, so it's m a much broader scope that I have being here. Um, I cover the entire of the Big Island, uh, representing the various HCD services, which include research grants, um, uh, of, uh, parks that they run, incubators, and accelerator programs, like in Hilo or in um, Maui and in uh, Honolulu. And this particular program 
the HI plan program is very important to us because it fits right in the wheelhouse of uh, our mission, really, to create jobs. Um, and last year was a great success as far as we're concerned. Um, a lot of businesses have come out of this and with my clients. Uh, my services are primarily as a business mentor. I have over 50 years in the software industry, um, somewhat retired at the moment, <laughs> although it doesn't look like it being right here. But, um, and I'm, I'm excited to see how so many people have really good ideas here and they're in the process, they're trying to figure out how to convert those or change, to, to realize those as businesses rather than just ideas and how to make, make the ideas of that. So um, I'm here as a mentor primarily. It's a free service from the state. It's available to any company that's growing at this stage on the island. But the primary focus right now is the HI plan and to that our business planning workshop in, uh, at Nelha in Kona. Um, it's uh, co-sponsored with uh, the Small Business Development Center over there and Dennis Boyd. Uh, if you need to reach out to or want to reach out, Jim will have us on the website here very soon. Okay. Good. So, all right, thank, thank you, Tom. We have a lot of sponsors we want to briefly thank before Derek starts, but a lot of their logos are here. Yeah. Uh, Tom's agency is the HTDC, that's Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, that's a state agency. We also have the thing that says high growth there, that's actually the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation. We have sponsors from Uupono, that's a philanthropic uh, association out of Honolulu, but they're very active on the Big Island supporting uh, agriculture. Um, uh, we mentioned the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Pacific Media Group. Uh, Dave Deleuze and his companies uh, have been a sponsor of the uh, competition, very generous. The Natural Energy Lab has uh, been a, a financial sponsor and this year are gonna be the host for round two and round three in their new innovation center, which is, I encourage everybody to try to make it over to those events because uh, it's a, a fantastic facility and uh, it should be very exciting. We're trying to get uh, on the date of round two, we will have, because it's gonna be a long day, we're gonna have the lunch prepared that day by the um, culinary program from Palamanui. So it should be a fantastic lunch. And then at the end of the session, we're going to get the Friends of Nelha to give uh, anybody who wants a tour of the Natural Energy Lab. And that's really uh, gonna be a fantastic experience too if you haven't gone around there. It's quite an amazing place. Um, did I meet any, uh, Darren Kimura, maybe one of Hilo's most successful uh, entrepreneurs, Hilo Boy, now up in the Silicon Valley. He's a sponsor and uh, I think I hit on all of them, and, but anybody in this room that has uh, that kind of inclination, we can always use more money. We would love to raise enough money this year so that we can provide both a second and third place prize. That was uh, feedback we got from last year that that would be really nice, but we have to get the, the money together to do that. So we'll see, we're trying. So uh, with no further ado, we're going, oh, I know, we're going to show the uh, promotional video. It's a short little uh, one minute and 20 second uh, production uh, done by the In Big Island group. And it just sort of tells the whole story in a, in a quick synopsis. So here we go. to expand even more into other states. We have new equipment to be able to 
go international, we've got our name out there more. So for anyone out there who is a budding entrepreneur, if you've already started your business or if you have been bouncing around some ideas that maybe you'd like to try, I highly, highly recommend that you sign up for the High Plan Business Competition for 2017. Give it a shot. You never know. You just might be like us. Everyone is welcome to submit a business plan for consideration this year. Once again, the top prize is $25,000, and this year, a special award will be given out to the best business plan developed and presented by a student. Just visit the HiPad website where you'll find our guidelines for entering the competition. Mahalo and good luck! Thanks, Matt. Okay, so that gave you all the details you need to know about how this is how to proceed in here. And of course, uh, as Kelly mentioned, we're really trying to uh, make this event a networking opportunity. So if any of you have any questions at all, don't hesitate, approach us directly or uh, during the course of this evening, we're gonna have refreshments too. But now in the program, I'm gonna ask uh, Derek Carisu to come up. And Derek is from KTA Superstores. He's also a TV celebrity you may know about, and uh, he's going to uh, host a roundtable discussion with uh, three uh, Hilo entrepreneurs, and uh, I'll ask Derek to come up and he can introduce the uh, entrepreneurs to you, and he's basically going to coordinate a, a conversation with them, and at a certain point he'll open that up to uh, discussion with the audience, so if you have any issues that you want to uh, ask them, here you go. So here's Derek Carrizo. Thank you very much. You know, um, Kelly and Jim, man, thank you so very much. You know, it's only in Hawaii you find people like, like Kelly and Jim that step up the plate and really try to make a difference for our community. So yeah, we super, totally appreciate all what you do. And we want to also want to thank Naha and we thank the university and the, the chamber. I mean, gee whiz, you know, I, I think about the situation, thinking about how businesses and organizations and the university is working together to come up with such a fantastic program is unbelievable. And I think it's because we live here in Hawaii. So hey, lucky we live in Hawaii. So I also want to thank our three busy, busy, hardworking panelists. Um, you know, um, it was kind of interesting because, you know, I had to do this panel thing, so I looked for people to select, and I selected these three because, you know, each one of them has a real unique leadership style, and they have some outstanding qualities and really great business values. Uh, first, there's Jesse over here. You know, Jesse Fujimoto, I first met him speaking at a value-added agriculture conference at the community college, and I was really impressed because... After my speaking game, he came up and asked me all these hard questions. I go, wow. And, you know, I just looked at him and, you know, his eyes and his spirit and everything else. He was so, so he wanted to do something. He wanted to make things happen. And he was uh, you know, raising um, turmeric um, and he wanted to also create a value-added product. So I told um, Jesse to come to the store and um, come and meet me. He came within a week. So, you know, this guy, yeah, he's like... Uh, Quite humble, but yeah, he really has a spirit of, of, of success. Then we have Candice. Candice is a very interesting person. You know, actually, I knew her dad um, before I knew Candice. And, you know, I always admired Eddie Fukuda, her dad, because, you know, he was really uh, enterprising. He was smart, and he's also a very caring person. You know, his daughter Candice, uh, well, she graduated college. She stayed up in the mainland. She also started an online uh, uh, business, you know, and um, from nothing. So I was like, wow, it's pretty good. And she uh, currently operates, um, she had to come home to, to take over the father's business. Uh, so she operates Candice Driving and Fukuda Laundry Mat. You know, I worked with Candice on several community projects. And I was impressed with her leadership and ability to get things done. I mean, she just kept on howling me and howling me to finish my job. And, and, and I was kind of like amazed. And she did it with style, you know. And she had some class doing it. And she's a perfectionist, very organized, but she's super generous and has the ability to execute and do whatever and make things happen. 
Candice, and Lee Fukuda. Then there's George. George is a very interesting person who I got to know while he was working with um, uh, George Okayama I went to his welfare to work program. And as you know, um, I, I, I was really, first time I talked to George, I said, wow, this guy is a, such a humble, gentle giant. You know, he was so big, intimidating, but he's a gentle giant. And um, now he owns this Rainbow Connection, one of the companies that was formed through his welfare to work program. And George impressed me with his ability to change. And you know, he's able to um, change as people change, uh, needed, change is needed. And um, he develops a lot of new products and he's capable of producing small quantity of items as well as he also markets all this stuff at the Made White Festival with 40,000 people. So he can do, he's very, very flexible. And George always impressed me because he's such a quiet, humble person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you folks some questions, okay? And, um, and maybe you guys could kind of like answer it, okay? I'm going to answer, okay. You get stuck, no worry, just cry. Okay. okay. <laughs> or somebody in the audience will help you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you guys for two questions first. So maybe we start with you, Jesse, okay? I want you to describe your business and the customer you serve. Question number one. Number two, why and what made you get into the business you have today? And we can describe it. Okay, and I got the rest of the time to, to talk about this? Yeah, 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 go ahead. <laughs> okay, so our business is based basically on the well-known expansion of the organic sector. According to the USDA, consumer demand for organic foods have increased every year since the 1990s. It's kind of well known. Um, Hoi Simple Gourmet is a company that we started. My, when I say we, it's my girlfriend and I of 11, almost 12 years. She's going to kill me. Um, but yeah, she's actually an alumni of University of Hawaii, graduated in the agriculture department. So Hawaii Simple Gourmet got built to be basically the bridge between the small natural growers here in Hawaii and conscious consumers by providing high quality products which showcases each grower's passion and dedication along with sharing their story. And what made us get into this business is that we know that we could supply a portion of this niche market while promoting what we believe in and creating jobs and opportunities within our community. We vision a future of many small natural growers around the state supplying food to the surrounding communities that they're involved in. We also know that we weren't the only ones looking into our current food system in search of clean, healthy, natural choices. There are conscious consumers in the marketplace. They're all around. Just take, around, take a look around you. They're your neighbors. They're people just like you and me who care really about what we put into our bodies and attempt to be conscious about that. A lot more people are becoming aware. We strive to support local natural growers, but they're usually hard to find and they don't have the resources to get their produce or their products out to the right clientele. Sorry, a little bit more. I'm not asking for that one. So, so I, I have a question for you. So you know, I, I, he, he has his value added stuff in our, in our stores today at, at the Point of Coast store. It's a, it's a tumor rack, right? It's, um, and, and why, why turmeric? Uh, well, we developed a few different forms of the turmeric products to help our families, first and foremost. A lot of our family and friends are on pharmaceuticals that they don't really want to be on, and most of it's NSAIDs or um, ibuprofens or whatnot, but basically our goal was to provide them with a natural-based medicine that could alleviate some of their pains and inflammation that they're facing to make them help them feel better. It was kind of interesting because I read the label and it also helps with obesity. So I started to take them a couple of days ago. <laughs> so if, if I get skinny, you go, wow, that thing works because we're out to the store. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Candace, describe your business and the customer you serve. Why and what made you get into the business you have today? Okay, so 
actually, it's a family business, been around for 50 years. My dad opened it on the premise that the community was going to get together at Candy's, and um, a lot of kids from across the street from Waikewaina would come and eat there, and he also coached at the field. So it was a gathering place, and he really wanted community to be first. And so that's the premise of the, of the business still. Um, we have our group of men on the orange table at five in the morning, and they're retired county, they're retired state workers, postmen, every you know, facet of life is there in the morning, and they discuss all the world's issues whether it be you know, the Tribune Herald or um, what's going on in the community, that's where things are made. And it's nice because you see them every morning. I also have a lot of construction men that come. And so we're, we're open from four in the morning. And we do that because there was a niche that you know, there was no open businesses to eat in the morning. So we get fishermen, we get hunters when it's hunting season. Um, the policemen come. So 85% of my customers are men. And the joy to that is, you know, they're, they're happy. They're happy to get their food in the morning. We see their car come in. You know, we know exactly what the, they want. And I actually, some of them, I don't really even know their names, but I know what they order every single day. Mm -hmm. And what's great about um, our business is, is that our, our employees are there for forever. So they know these customers and know the community. And that's, you know, what really inspires our business, drives our business still. I didn't have to really change any plans. Um, I didn't have to, I just came on in and managed it the way my dad did. And we provide cheap and cheerful food. We want people to come back. And I, you know, I always tell my people that the best thing to do is provide excellent customer service. That's what they want. They want to get in. They want to get out. Um, so that was the inspiration. And it, most of all, too, it's my dad. You know, the place is actually built around my my dad. And so, of course, as the only child, I'm going, I'm going to fulfill that dream of his to keep the business going and, and be a part of the community. So, You know, uh, what, what surprised me about Candice, she's a young girl. She goes to work every morning at 2 o'clock to cook rice. Isn't that right? 12, 12.30. Oh, 12.30. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, thought I got o'clock. off the plane last night. <laughs> and then, so slept you go two early hours. and cook rice, right? We cook rice. We start our bentos by 3. The bentos are done and gravy and macaroni, all the things you need to make a food service business work, it happens at 12 to 3 in the morning at County because we have such a small kitchen. Yeah. You know, but we have people doing laundry at that time. You know, you really get to know your customers because they come every day or every, the same day at every time. So you kind of worry about them too. You know, oh, Mr. So-and-so didn't show up today. I wonder if he's okay, you know. But a, a lot of my employees take pride in that, in what they do, and they each specifically have a job that makes candies run the way it does. And you know what is uh, really interesting about your play? I see a lot of old-time employees and some employees, children of employees, yes, and, and I see some of your recipe doesn't even change. I mean, It doesn't. Um, you know, I have recipes from... 40 years ago, spare ribs, you know, that the auntie made. And now, you know, someone else is, is taking over. Beef stew, you know, it came from another aunt. Or short ribs came from another cook, Mrs. Moses. You know, so you have that family identity. You know, and that's, that's a lot of our business, you know, is, is to do. Our bentos have not changed in 30 years <laughs> since we offered a bento. You know, we used to do 20,000 bentos a year because no one made bentos back then. We didn't have a shell across the street. You know, not every convenience store sold a bento. So, you know, it's a unique business. And even though I offer a different one, they still want the same one. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Candice. And George, describe your business and customers you serve. Why and what made you get into the business you have today? About, um I've been about the business for about seven years from Hawaii County Economic Opportunity Council. George Okuyama, the administrator at the time, um, um, I, I discussed with him. Actually, the administration changed 
and they decided to go a different direction, and, and that's what really happened. And it was about to dissolve the economic development program, employment and training side. And actually, that was, that was the most important part of the program, I felt. So I talked to George at the time, and, and I told him, hey, George, I can do this. I can take care of this business. And the social worker, you take the same desire, the same passion, and the intensity is the same. So I said, I can do this. So I said, I'll buy this business. Give us the opportunity. I'll take some of my workers already there, take them along with me, and I'll take care of I'll pay. Borrowed some money from friends. Started the business about seven years with the, with the same mission statement is providing services for the economically disadvantaged. And as I am really excited that I continue doing the same. It's a lot of work because in business, in um, certain positions, you need a certain type of people. You know, it's ideal to find people that are smarter than you to help you in this, this particular positions like that. And you do what you got to do, and sometimes you need to pay them more than you pay yourself. So although 90% of my workers are, are um, economically disadvantaged, most of them are single parents, single moms. And, um, and at that moment, what I did was I said, I need to sell. That's the only thing was on my mind that I need to sell. So I, made, I did some product Actually, most of my recipes was all given to me. Was given to me. Um, I was just blessed. Was given to me. It took off. It did well. KTA Superstores was the. They started me off. They started me off. Um, I, I, I'm proud to say that too. It's been seven years. I'm still there. Um, I'm still working hard. Uh, my uh, workers are the most important thing. Actually, my uh, product is my workers. My, the, the candies, the, the, the cookies, and everything is the byproduct. And I focus on that because I feel, as a business person, we all, um, we all um, do community service. We give money constantly. We don't even think it sometimes. But the greatest gift that you can give someone is a job, a good living. If you can focus on that, that's what business has to do, is focus on on their workers, more so than the bottom line. Because you take out your workers, your workers take care of you. And that's how it goes. And that, so I have channeled my energy toward that way. And, um, you know, I'm trying to work at a level where I can pay them their medical like that. That would be my next level. See, I'm not looking at my next level of how do I expand. I'm looking at how can I give them a better living. And everything tends to take care of itself. You know the, but you know the bottom line is that um, you need to take care of the bottom line. And so, if you need to get certain people there to do it, you hire them. You know what I mean? That needs to be taken care of in order for me to provide this, continue to providing my services. And that's and and that's what I did. I did. Um, and that's what I'm doing. I continue to do it. Um, Rainbow Falls Connection, our focus on is uh, value-added products. So our products is always looking at what can I take from the farmers and create. And, and that's what I, I, I love doing that. Um, and um, it, it can be, become a problem because you end up with too much products that everybody wants and you have only so much time to, um, to make. Another thing is by helping the community is that I like to um, I incubate to, I can, if I can service some businesses just starting out, I do that like that. Right now I do private labeling also. See, I needed to sell, I needed to create some way of creating cash flow. So this is some business, a few businesses has expanded so big that they, they couldn't do all what they needed out there for their market. I did. Uh, some business um, like Dini De Luca, they want a certain um, product with their label, I do it. So I do those, um, I, you know, I just want to um, you know, diversify as much as I can to get the most from my workers. Hey, you know, you know what's really amazing with, with George's company, 
um, I do it a many wide festival for maybe about 10 years now and try to organize the thing. And I was, the first time I went to his booth and he started to go to the many wide festival, um, 30 to 40,000 people there. And one of the workers came to me and said, you know what, man, it's such a great experience. George pays for the airfare, which, you know, he, he hires all welfare people, right? So they get to fly on the airplane. He said, wow, we stayed in the hotel. You know, we stayed in a hotel, and you know, they never would stay in a hotel, and we even ate in the ration. I mean, they were just so, so, so proud and happy to have that experience of riding the airplane, staying in the hotel, and, and eating the ration. And you know what, George? I, I, and, and some of them, you look at their face, they were just so emotional, and, and, and that really turned me onto your boot. And you know, and every year I make sure I check up on his booth and make sure he have enough customers coming there. And if he doesn't have enough, I'll go and make an announcement on the PA, the Blaisdell, to make sure that you go and help him out. Yeah, so it's, uh, Judge, thank you very much for what you do. Too good. Okay, the next two questions I might have here. Okay, um, Jesse, uh, how did you start and how did you finance your business? And the second thing is a little bit tougher. Um, there are strict, you know, even for us, so much strict government regulation. How does a small business comply with some of these regulations? It's a good question. <laughs> so we started our business from the ground up. We were self-invested. We started with minimum capital, great ideas, but small expansions. Because when you're starting with no money, if you put all your eggs in one basket and you drop your basket, you gotta find more eggs. Eggs are hard to find. So we had the great ideas and we also had a desire to see a positive change. Uh, your second question, out of order, but it's okay. Uh, the small businesses, we comply with government regulations as best as we can, step by step. Especially with key assistance from and a special thank you out to SBDC, uh, Kohala Center, UH Hilo faculty and staff, the HCC Continuing Education Program, the Chamber of Commerce, and especially the small businesses willing to help and support wherever they can. Especially including KTA Superstores, thank you Mr. Carisu, and our friends at Sweet Cane Cafe, Aloha Grown, and Island Naturals, just to name a few. Thank you. You know, you know, it was amazing, and maybe you didn't talk about it, but what amazed me with your company is that, you know, you and your girlfriend, you guys, like, totally believe in your, your, your product that is going to help people. It's not just about selling or, you know, putting the thing out. I mean, it's, it's more than that, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's what really amazed me. And, and, and they have a great uh, homestead farm, yeah? Yeah. It's, it's out in Papaiko. And he has um, vanilla, right? Yeah. And your job is to pollinate, not your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I do the tedious stuff. She's a workhorse, and I do a lot of tedious stuff, crossing the seeds and dotting the eyes. You know, it was amazing. The other day, he came to our store to kind of fix the displays and all that. And, you know, my workers, I, I, I talked to them. and said, wow, you know, usually they're totally anti this, anti oh, We don't, you know. And, wow, man, they, they just wanted to help him do anything he wanted. So after he left, I questioned him, I said, hey, so what? He said, oh, you know, Jesse, he's such a nice guy. You know, when he speaks, he speaks from the heart. And we'll do anything for him. And the workers are telling me, I shouldn't tell you this yet. <laughs> but the workers are telling me that. I go, wow, that's fantastic, you know. He goes, you know, your, your action carries on more than anything else. So thank you very much. Um, Candice, um, how did you start and how did, how did you finance your business? Um, and there's strict regulations, especially in like a, you know, food business. And uh, how does a small business comply with some of these regulations? Well, you know, it's a little different because I inherited the business. So financially, I didn't really have to go out and go and re get more money for it. It was established, so I had to maintain it and come back and readjust to living here. And I think that's a big challenge for a lot of us that are in our 40s and 50s that are coming home to take care of mom and dad with our families and you know, still keeping our family businesses. You see a lot of family businesses closing here. And um, I think that 
a lot of us come home with the great idea that things are just going to happen, but you have to be out there in the community. You have to um, establish friends and you establish coworkers and people around you that, you know, like he says, you take care of your, your employees. They're, they're like your family. And that's the difference with small business and family owned business, you know, that I think a lot of it is losing that little luster here, but new businesses are, are, are growing. So, you know, you see that evolution happen. Um, how I, I think that, you know, you can really start and grow the business more is really looking at who's up next to bat. You know, there's this huge elderly population that, you know, we need to take care of here. And I feel that there's lack of business, lack of structure that, that helps that. Even my employees, they're getting older. You know, how do, how do we, you know, continue to support them, whether it's medical, you know, trying to help them get a house. I mean, I only have 15 employees at my little restaurant. So, you know, you think about those things, you know, now it's very important because you want to keep them there. You want them because they're part of your business. So... Um, so as far as the financial part, it's, it's, a hard, it's, a, it's a, always a tough road. And um, dealing with, you know, Board of Health, you know, all the stringency factors that they put on us. I mean, there's a reason why we have to do it. But now you have to make it important for your employees to feel the same way. Like, hey, we still got to do these rules. The new rules came out two years ago. We got to implement them. We got to get it done. And, you know, it's hard you know, some days it's like, oh, it's very stressful. And um, yeah, I, for, for us, it's Board of Health, you know, OSHA, um, and then maintaining our properties, you know. Um, my, our business has been around for 50 years. You know, the termites, like my dad said, are holding hands together <laughs> to keep it alive. So, um, you know, the succession plan for that would be, you know, hey, it goes down and we rebuild one day maybe, or turn it into something else, so. Oh, thank you. You know, it's kind of easy. You mentioned about the uh, elderly, right? And for me, that's why on my TV show, I try to teach every man to cook. Because, you know, it's kind of sad because, you know, when their wives are sick or, or pass away, they'll come into the store helpless. They don't even know how to feed themselves. So I have to go there and try to help them buy stuff on the deli and everything else. And what Candice does, and I, I, I know you, you guys sell meals for uh, seniors, right? Frozen, microwave. Yeah, and it's so sad. You don't want them to go out to just eat fast foods all right. over the place like that. So you try to make it a little healthy. And, and you know, that's something that we got to kind of like look at and cope with somewhere down in the future. Right. I think so, so every man should know how to cook. So, you know, from now on, you men, go home and cook and let your wife sit down and watch TV and drink <laughs> beer. <laughs> you know, I, I think I got more women. No, oh, I shouldn't say that. I get more men than women in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, George, um, how did you start and how did you finance your business and uh, there's strict government regulation. How does a small business comply with some of these regulations?
Japanese people of your place. So what, what happened? They, they, they were interested in buying your stuff? Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Okay, this is another thing. Um, so same thing to Japan, and it's not to, so much to do with the American laws, but it has to do with the Japan, the real finicky, the real, um, and the Watsuda from the um, Department of Ag, um, they're a great help. But uh, the volume was just too too great. The potential volume was just too great for me. You know, I had an order like um, um, so many um, um, thousands of kilos of uh, uh, passion butter. At that time, did I mean, I'm only going okay, two kilos make a pound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so, so, so yeah, you know, so it's the only thing about everything is um, so it's different. And then when I realized that, I, I, I called the guy from uh, Japan. I said, I cannot do this. Uh. I, they don't, first of all, I cannot get enough Lily Koi to do this. And um, it's going to take me a few months just to get enough jars to bring in to. So, yeah, the, um, and in Japan, there was a, um, I guess there was a Hawaii uh, pancake uh, special. Right. Just a few years ago, yeah. and it was a big thing. It has to happen now. I knew that if I did it, I, I would be in already. You know what I mean? It would be perfect. But it had to be real, and you know, just six of us. You know what I mean? And we all just don't go in like this. You know, we're a fox. Like a, today, I have a I have a self um, spinning, uh, um, you know, seventeen thousand dollar equipment that does it, but it's still twenty twenty uh, pots like that. You know? It's kind of, you go to a job, it's kind of interesting. So, you know, when I do have people that are interested in buying stuff, you know, maybe you do a mailing or, or uh, they want to they wanna, um, sell it in Japan. I go and bring them to George place uh, and, and it's kind of interesting because he always smiles at them and for that, they're happy. So, he's a very good tourist attraction. <laughs> you have to learn how to speak Hawaiian a little bit to them. Yeah. They'll be a little bit better off. Oh, that's good. So, um, I got some other questions here. Maybe Jesse, you could answer this. Um, uh, what are your thoughts about agriculture and why are you developing these um, value added products? So, are you gonna, are you gonna go for other questions on what drives you? You can answer that too. Okay, what, what drives you? Okay, what, what, what actually drives you? Yeah. <laughs>
it's not feasible to be profitable within the first five years. So, and that's for growing food naturally. But there is a growing demand for naturally grown food. It's kind of ironic, but HSG strives to bridge that gap, providing income opportunities for those operations when they need it most. The products that are created support these small natural growers and give them a platform to become successful members of our community. And here in Hawaii, agriculture now is way different than it was than when it was 200 years ago, when sustainability was a reality. And now, more and more people are actually wanting the product from the old way. So we're here to help bring that back. Fantastic. You know, I was kind of interested, I talked to Jesse <coughs> once, and, um, you know, he has a lot of land. He want to expand and everything else. And, you know, he gets work as one of his problems. So I told him, you and your girlfriend better start making babies so you can find work. <laughs> and we were just laughing about it. And he said, you better get babies. And he said, yeah. Um, and so I said, yeah, if boys would be better, go they could work. He said, no, if, they, if girls, I'll make sure that the boyfriend comes to work on the farm. <laughs> so he got everything all figured out. <laughs> Yeah, so hey, now you gotta learn how. You can plant all kind of stuff, now you gotta learn how to make babies again. <laughs> oh yeah, Candice, um, what are the one or two things that drive and motivate you and your company to succeed? And the second question I would have for you, um, you know like your dad, you took over your business, actually your dad took over some of the business from your grandfather, you took over your business from your dad, and um, do we have a succession plan? Oh, a lot of questions. That's, that's just two that's, questions. That's a lot. Um, no, uh, basically, my, you know, I would love my daughter to do something in the business field, but she's more of an engineer, electronic person. So it's hard to say that it's going to succeed over to her. But I think for me, it'll succeed over for more for my employees to keep it going. You know, I would like one of my employees to take over and, and take care of this and keep it going as far as that goes. Um, always thinking of new things to do with the business, you know, just as far as growth-wise. Not having a candies too, or it's going to make it better. I think just bringing different things to the islands, exposing people to different foods, you know, that's important. You, you're going to get more customers coming. It's just really hard in the community that you're in, so you would have to expand out. So the succession plan would be to expand outward somewhere else, doing another food kind of product that we've been looking at lately. So always, you know, we're always looking at new things to do and um, different things to develop. It's a little hard when you have your family still around because, you know, change is tough. You know, dad doesn't like change. Dad likes it the way it is. So there's a balance. You know, in my business world, it's a little different. I still have a board to answer to, which is mom and dad, right? And so change at 80, 84 for my dad it is tough. So, you know, it's a great balancing act as far as our family business goes. Um, drive, drive. Actually, I, I'm more of a fundraising, give back to the community, work at the school, you know, those things are the driving factor for me to run my business and do my business here in this community. Because that's what I always say, if I come back home, that's what I want to do. Um, so I help a lot of projects, you know, I help and cook all the time, constantly. Chili here, you know, donation of this here, any, any food products. And that's, that's part of our, 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 our family. It's kind of neat because your dad was like that. <clears throat> and now I see yourself running all over the place. Uh, your daughter is a junior in high school, yes. right? Very smart girl, plays volleyball for Waikia High School, mm -hmm. right? Involved in many different activities. And you're over there, you have to support it. So, you know, it's, um, thank you very much. It takes parents like you to make a difference. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy giving back because I know that, you know, like a lot of my workers, they have children, they don't have time to go and help. You know, they, they got to work. And, or there's parents there at volleyball that, you know, cannot show up or, or bring food, right? So we, we try to supply that, and that's how my mindset is, you know, to give back. Oh, fantastic. So, um, George, yeah. 
What are one of the two things that drives and motivates you and your company to succeed? Mm -hmm. Question number one. Question number two. Um, so what's the future of Rainbow Connection? Okay, Rainbow Falls Connection. Rainbow Falls Connection. You know, at this time, I already looking at my, my exit plan. Succession will probably be workers too. My children uh, and uh, my, my wife, uh, it's, I, I never asked them to work uh, uh, in the business. Um, because it's my dream, That's it wasn't their dream. And I wanted my children to have their own dream. So, and then if I ask my, my wife, because um, we don't get along. Uh, I know. <laughs> I just don't get along. <laughs> we don't get along. The, the way it is, it's just perfect, you know what I mean? Um, I'm excited about, because I know I need to expand at a higher level. Um, and I, I, get, I get in a rush just saying it right now, you know what I mean? Because there's so much things that run through my mind. As an entrepreneur, there's so much potential, there's so much possibilities, and you want to do it all. Yeah. So I need to get grounded uh, before I, I, I make, and I, I'm going, how should my expansion be? Uh, um, and, you know, I dream a lot too, so, but at the meantime, I, I know that I need to stay grounded, so I do that. I look at it uh, more realistically. I, I'm, I'm looking at my, my staff, I say, okay, what, how can I expand? Because I cannot expand if I get, I need to get key people in key positions that are uh, to take me further. And that's the exciting part too. I, I um, um, succeed to that, that fact, that the next level would be to get people, to smarter people than myself, to take the next level. Because I really, yeah, I get a rush just thinking about <laughs> it. Because I can see helping more people. Yeah. You understand? I can see the potential of helping more people. See, I'm his passion. Yeah, yeah he has yeah, a, lot. a lot. All of, all of you three have a lot of passion. You have passion for something yeah. that drives you to do this yeah. business, you yeah. know? Like I told Mr. Yokoyama, I said, I can't do it, you know what I mean? And the late um, George Yokoyama, I said, I can't do it, you know what I mean? Uh, the intensity is, it's, 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 yeah, it's there. You know, it's kind of interesting now I think about it, right? Here we got Jesse and the wife, they work so beautifully together. She feeds the animals, you know, he goes there, he does all the hard job, and you know, and, and for Candace and Jaws, they don't want their spouse around. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so why, uh, Candace? What, what I mean, why? I mean, I, I know your, your, your husband tries to help, but you just... We, we try to, well, it's hard to work with your spouse, right? So, you know, it's best that if I'm working, he's at home. And when I'm sleeping at 7 in the morning to 10 in the morning, he's down there doing the paperwork and the finances. So that's how we split the business, is that he's down and I'm up. Where I'm at, after 12 o'clock, I'm at school or I'm doing a fundraiser or something else, or I'm doing this, you know, so I don't have to, because they have different wants, yeah. different dreams, you know, and we try not to mix it up too much. It's for, not the same. Yeah. For, for me, it's the, <laughs> my wife is smarter, you know. She's really smart. You know. I'm the dreamer. I want to do this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, oh, let's do this, yeah. right? But that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? You're always dreaming about what can you do next and how you can make it better. You know, so. Yeah, for me, I see other uh, opportunities besides Rainbow Falls Connection. So I, I, I sometimes get drifted. I drift um, to other things too. Uh. So. JC, maybe you could open one consulting business, how to work together with your spouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. I mean, it's just so natural together. Oh, it's, it's difficult. It is. It's never easy. But having different roles, sharing the same dream is really important. Yes. And in our relationship, I'm the, I'm the dreamer. I have dreams bigger than the clouds, and I'm always reaching for them. She's always pulling me back down and saying, hey, think about it. That's not realistic. You have this goal. Like, yeah, you're right.
know, um, I, I got this question here, and I, I, I think the person that could answer it best, being an entrepreneur who started off and built a real super big business and was able to sell it, uh, I think he could answer this best. Jim, Jim, you could answer this question the best. Um, what is the hardest or the best part of being an entrepreneur? Are we got audience participation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't like being in an organization. I'm not an organizational person. And I'm not, you know, especially having a bunch of bosses makes me crazy. So I'm very independent. And being an entrepreneur, you're kind of your own boss. Although you learn that your customers become your boss, that's, that's okay. They're not, you know, in your face all the mm. time. So that was for me the best part, that I was in charge of my own destiny, and I was my own boss, and, you know, so that's wow. how it works for me. Wow. Yeah. And Kelly, I want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah? You know, you are... I'd just like to echo what Jim said. I don't think, I'm trying to think of, I don't think I've worked for anybody since the early 90s. I've been my own boss, except my wife, of course. <laughs> You guys want to add to that? Just the rush. Huh? You get the rush. Yeah. You want to go back and work? Yeah. And you can keep your values to what you truly believe in. And know that no matter what somebody kind of tells you, oh, you got to do it this way, knowing that's against what you believe. To me, that's Yeah, definitely. Wow. You know, coming from corporate America first, after we got out of college, I worked at A Flower, so I was a clothing um, catalog buyer. And I did that for like 10 years. And you know, you're in a room for eight hours with 20 people trying to decide which shirt you're going to sell on that page, you know? So now like, you know, um, we were just discussing, you can't turn back, you know? And if once you get into your own business, it's hard to go back. You're your own boss, you do what you think you like it. You make your hours, you know? And that's the beauty of it, you know? No one telling you what you gotta do or when you get up, you do it. <laughs> Doing business in Hilo, it's a, it's a whole different thing, it's yeah. a whole different culture. Because just because the way Hilo is, or Big Island is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yet at this time, at this moment. <laughs> well, yeah. Great. Yeah. well, you know, we have some time remaining, and we'll be open for some uh, questions. Um, we ask you don't ask any uh, financial <laughs> confidential questions. Cause if it's financial confidential, I don't think they, they want to answer it. So um, um, go ahead. Questions, any question? Dr. DeFelix, you always have questions? <laughs> I mean, I, I went to one of your lectures. I thought you were, you were a really good teacher. Thank you. Okay, I'm a lecturer. Okay, go ahead.
Accountability is really important. Um, um, uh, most, uh, my workers can get away with most things with me, but there's a few things uh, that they, 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 they need to be accountable for. Accountability is important. It's, 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 it's in respect for everyone. Do you want me to text you your paycheck? You know, no. So um, you, you need to come and tell me, hey, you know, this is not a match for me. And I'm totally fine with that. It is not a match. But, you know, it seems like the generation, too, has changed a lot where communication is via text versus talking. So even, like, uh, teaching them you know, new things or teaching them how to do their job, they won't look at you. You know, they don't have that one-on-one because -on -one everything is via it's easier to text them. It's amazing, you know, you don't have that connection with them. So that's what needs to come back is the connection. And with smaller businesses, I think it's easier. You know, you have that connection. But a lot of them, if you're going to not say discipline them, but correct them, they have a hard time looking at you and, and giving you. No, no doubt. Um, uh, most, um, uh, well, uh, my work that I work with, um, non-structural, they have no there's no structure, no structure, even at home, and that, you know. So you, you, you design one, you know, for mm -hmm. them, you know. And so, like, with her set of rules, that's how she chose to structure her, her system or program. How many, how many people do that? Hmm. Oh, a lot of patience. A lot of love, man. A lot of patience, a <laughs> lot of love. Hmm. Um, <laughs> and because um, um, child care is important. It's important to me. Your family is most important to me. You need to take, go take care of it, you know what I mean? So now I have to make adjustments over here, you know? You say, go ahead, and you'll be like, oh, it's the second time this weekend, you know? But it, it, I, you've been to too, you know what I mean? But I, I strongly believe this how, for me, I, I need to do things to make it work for me, you know? Finding so. the right employee to fit the job. Yes, yes. And it's really not the job. The job is easy. I mean, we're not trying. school of just work hard. Yeah. You just work hard. Um, so I'm used to that. There's a new um, um, uh, way uh, that the workers come in and they give you your, their schedule. This day is a calendar. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. If you're not dying oh, already, so you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, now here's my schedule. Uh, <laughs> this, and you're like, Call them up, you didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I, I cannot. So that's your number one problem today yeah. is your employees. So it's, 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 it's getting the right fit, even yeah. just personality wise, right? You know, we have a bunch of women cooking, you know, and you have one guy in there. Yes. It's, he better be re ready to deal with all the aunties. Yes. Right. So, you know, it's. it's
You know, it's kind of interesting because I've been going down to this place called Rikuzu in Takata in Japan for four years after the tidal wave oh, devastation yeah. to go down there and bring back life and make them happy. And it was kind of interesting because, you know, I kind of started to question them, you know, because I wanted to learn some social skills and things like that. So I asked this group and actually asked it later. So how come you guys all recovered? You know, it, well, four years, because when I first went there, they would say they came back and their property, they had nothing. And whatever they found on their property, they would go and put it in a community place so people would go there and see what was theirs and they would bring them back. No looting, no stealing and everything else. So I said, now how do you guys learn such discipline? So about the fourth year I went there, uh, they said, you know what? When we went to school from, from growing up, we believed in this thing called wah. You got to believe in taking care of everybody else and nature before yourself. So, you know, he said, with that, they were able to recover and not fight each other and everything else because they looked at everything as a whole instead of self. So they told me they learned that from like elementary school when they first went to school. So, you know, you know, those are some disciplines that I was kind of amazed how to recover. So I go, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty neat. So did they answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, last year, Troy from OK Farms did a presentation about growing vegetables hydroponically, I think, and then integrating educational components into the business model of growing vegetables. So Jessica, I just wanted to know, um, you're in a real growth industry, organic, wealthy, food, that's the that area that's growing. And also, the other two, but do you integrate, do you have ideas of how to integrate You know what, it's kind of interesting when Dr. Hahn talked about the daughter. I remember they were in the kindergarten, and uh, I, I actually the project was to, to recycle our cartons. So I got milk cartons to show them how to raise the vegetables in there. But it was a matter of teaching them responsibility, because every day they had to water their plants, 
and I talked to them about farm theft. So every weekend, they had to go bring them to somebody's house and, you know, take them in, take them out every day. So, I mean, there were so much lessons learned through that project there. And the good thing about it, after the thing grew, we made the tuna sandwich. And every single one of the students there said, you know, Uncle Derek, that was the best lettuce I ate in my life. <laughs> so they felt really good about it. So, yeah, thanks for reminding me about that project. And we made a book. You still got the book. My lettuce garden, yes. So, yeah. That's a connection, I think, to the food and to oh, yeah. these old ways and how it's done. It really inspires people. It just it yeah. sparks something in us that's always there, that was there from what, thousands of years ago. And it, it's, it's something, really, when you can get it and know that you can grow your own food, something that will nourish your body or your family's body, and be able to either prepare that or cook it in a way that tired or they're not with it today, I go, you got to have the love and the food because if not, it's not going to taste good, <laughs> you know? So. And we think the energy is really Right, it, yeah, us. it is. Any, any other questions? I got a question for Candace. Yeah. Um, how, how do you compete against the major big time fast food oh. who are worldwide and are in major advertising? It's market? tough. But that's one of our biggest things is getting the products in, right? And, and, and things not, you know, packaging or whatever it may be. You know, it's hard. Um, I guess just knowing your customers. You know, I, I know who I need to serve. You know, where my niche is. And we try opening till dinner, right? Everybody said, oh, the Kamalani Street is so busy. Why don't you open up dinner? We did it right before the crash happened. And it wasn't that feasible. And I knew that when I was in high school and I used to tell my parents, why are we open till seven at night? There's hardly anybody that comes. We are known for breakfast and lunch. Why, why, why are you killing yourself? Same thing I did it for a couple of years. And I'm like, why are we killing ourselves? But knowing who comes, when they come, is important. So that's how I'm, I'm different from McDonald's. They're open 24 hours. You can go get a burger or whatever you want. But I'm not you know who you're, you're serving, that's, that's all that matters. You know, at the end of the day. I've tried to change certain things, do different things. You know, you're young, you're innovative, you want to do it. But somehow where I'm at in the community I'm serving, yeah. they don't want that. You know, and they'll tell you. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's good. We have good feedback. Is the restaurant named after you or are you named after <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why we didn't name it Ed's or Eddie's, yeah. but we named it after. So we, <laughs> I, I don't know. It would have. My dad's so good. You know, everybody just needs to come to. I think so. Yeah, you no know, tree in. I like that. So I use the sign a lot now. And my dad, guess whose name is on the sign still? And then he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> Any other question? No questions. You know, you're fostering a sense of community with Candies and George. I know you do too, but that's something is that unique to Hilo? You know, I look at Candies, I look at totally. Harvey and Jerry at Freddy's, Cokies at Rizak, even Suisan. I see these little pockets of senses of communities, and the old timers are there day after day. Is that something unique? to change that, that, that mentality of business here. You know, your, your family has a lot to do with it. Um, how you're out there in the community represents who your company is, whether how it is a fishing tournament, right, yes. you could be yeah. involved with, yeah. to a school function. Your community is important. I mean, and then, you know, but that, my, that's how. Like even my products, you know, it's, it's um, taught. 
I've been talking to my product has always been, I want to keep it local, I want to keep my product. I have no intention of going global. I, yeah. You know, I, I didn't go, my, my mind is not there. My mind is to, to keep it local. It's, a, it's going to be a gay that you can go and give someone out there, you know. But, um, yes, um, yeah, um, I, I don't think nothing wrong with that. I think it's, it, it, at this time it's a good thing. the chevron in the front and that was my grandpa's and so my dad did not want to run the chevron he wanted to do candies he wanted to do food so it's interesting like uh, when we got it back when we first moved back we had the chevron and we had candies and then we had big island packaging because my cousin passed away so we had three businesses going on at the same time but all of them were family you know taking over my cousin's business taking over my old grandpa's chevron people came back because you know, we took it over. It's so funny. I mean, I was like, gosh, you know, how can this be? But the business got really big, and my dad was out there saying hello to people. I mean, that is a lot of our business, is being out in the community. Yeah. I just need and to stick with, my dad out. Same, same with KTA Superstore, it's like yeah. that. It's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's the same, you know, Derek is out here, you <laughs> know, doing a community thing for it, you know. It's the same thing, yeah. I think that's what lacks in the corporate. American business. You can just go for the food and it tastes great, but as far as community goes, when you're an entrepreneur, you can be the small entrepreneur or do you want to be the big? What what what's your game plan? You know, um, I think that's what you have to work on for your own self, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, one other question. Okay. More for Kyoki and Japan for your charge and uh how do you still like your business name? How do you still like your business name? Honestly, I didn't know, like the name, but it was it was there. Yeah. Um, I I couldn't do anything. If you notice, my packaging may change me to have RFC or um, uh, yeah, I did some changing, but it is what it is. And so now I have to just find a good brand for it. That's what people grew with it, and um, um, so I just need to magnify that more. I George Okayama had said, okay, it's the rainbow, rainbow of people that, that ECUC serve. So, um, um, and they, they serve the whole county of Hawaii. And that was the whole thing. I, I couldn't, ex I said, how can I explain that to everybody, you know, the rainbow of uh, people, but that's what it is. And, and I, um, I, I liked the thought at the time. I didn't like the name. I like the intentions like that. I still didn't like the name. Um, but I, yeah, I grew with it, and, and, and it's, it's a good name. <laughs> you know? so I thought it was I because of Rainbow Falls. Yeah, yeah I it Rainbow Falls. Rainbow Falls. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, the, the intent was the, the rainbow. Ah, and because it was nice. at the falls, it was rainbow. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. Jesse? Similar, similar with Koi Simple Gourmet, there's a lot of a passion and thought. We, we we doing it all over again, and we try to rework the branding now. So we're just focusing on the branding at this time. So there's going to be new things coming out on Rainbow Falls Connection, I think, just on the branding. Great. Any more questions? If not, you know, that's it. Then let's give our panelists a great hand. Anybody want to talk to them later or whatever it is, um, feel free. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Derek. That was great. Thank you, folks, for your interesting Thank you, conversation Thank you. and thanks for everybody uh, here listening and stuff. We have some uh, refreshments over here and I encourage people to hang out, have some food or drink and meet each other. That's part of the purpose of being here and anyone who's interested in entering the competition, if you have any questions about how to do that, uh, grab Kelly or myself 
and we can help you out while we're here. That's, and thanks everybody for coming out. It's great, great scene.